Hi, I'm Kasha Urbaniak, founder and headmistress of the Academy, the School of Power for Women. And I am so, so happy to be here and so proud to be here on this call to unite. Um, I'm also so proud that my global community of women is joining us and that we can all be here together as human beings just because connection is so important. And um, I know so many people are asking themselves and have been asking themselves the question, how can I use this time in quarantine to the best, to my, to the best of my abilities? And some are learning to cook and learning foreign languages. Um, what I've actually found is this is a profoundly useful and perfect time to reinvigorate our relationships, to strengthen and deepen our connections, and to reach out even further and have real, real connections with people that maybe we haven't been in touch with and expand, not networks, but create our extended family. And my students are doing that. They're building armies of love and support for themselves, for each other, and recreating community as it is on this planet. Uh, it's my dream that when the world opens up again, we'll all be stronger together this way. So what comes up, what comes up when human beings try to connect truly, deeply, very, very often is conflict. <laughs> So I'm here to provide you with our quarantine emotional survival toolkit. The first thing that I'd like you to consider is those negative, pesky, impossible, difficult emotions that none of us want to feel are actually tremendous gifts and potential allies. Something that arises in you and wants to speak, something that happens inside of you is yours and can be can be alchemized into an incredible resource of strength, of clarity, of desire, of power. So um, suppression of emotion, many of you may have found, does not work, especially in close quarters. What happens is that emotion gets bottled up for a second and poof, explodes recklessly in, in its most untenable, unwieldy way. And there tends to be this arc of an emotion that's suppressed stage one, then it starts to wake up, for example, anger, right? Wow. Starts to wake up. When it starts to wake up, stage two, it's a little bit like a, like a limb coming back to life. And when you start feeling those pins and needles, it's really, really, really uncomfortable. And you can't really use your leg that well. If you walk on it, you might fall over. And there is a third stage, which we very rarely get to, the one where there is a pleasant sensation and full mobility. So in this uh, in this time, if you have the time to start looking at some of your negative emotions as allies, the first thing that happens is they're going to come up and they, they might come up in their unruly form. And if you listen to what they have to say, on the other end of it, the ending of that arc is the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So let's take um, a feeling like sadness. Oh, sadness is so beautiful. Sadness is so, so beautiful because it usually begins with a story in the mind, but very, very quickly starts sinking inward. Inward where all of our bodily sensations lie. And then at the bottom, the third stage of the arc, is the revelation of some of our most tender, unspoken needs and desires. And when we can access those tender needs, we are no longer paying attention to the thing we want to get rid of. We are paying attention to the thing that we want to create, that vulnerable, precious, precious thing inside. Take another um, emotion like fear that contracts you in all directions. Fear is amazing because nothing will get you faster to accessing a desire than fear. If you are afraid of something, if you are afraid, it's often because there's something even bigger that you want. Something's being threatened. You want to protect it. You want to amplify it. You want to create more of it. So the end of that arc often exposes bigger, bolder desires, things that are really worth putting all of yourself into. Take something like anger. Anger 
can be very destructive in its second stage. You reach the third stage, you get clarity, you get direction and the way to get there. When you feel angry, everything comes up and out, right? You want to just shout. Well, oftentimes, because this energy is moving out, it looks for a target, something you're fighting against. The pivot with anger is to move from what you're fighting against to what you're fighting for. And this works so well in, in close relationships. Because if a couple or two people who are having conflict can sit down and go from fighting against each other to identifying what they're both fighting for, the conversation goes from being destructive, oftentimes stuck, to being generative, to having a possibility. How can we both get what we need? What is it that this anger is trying to protect or say that we can create with each other? All right, I hope all of you have the most tremendously wonderful time with all of us here for the rest of this event and for the rest of your time in this very, very unique and exceptional moment in history.